This is the best book about personal finance and business that I've ever read, and nobody's ever heard of it. It's called Super Achievers, and it teaches some of the best kept secrets of building wealth. Here's a summary. Don't overlook the crucial difference between the roots of success and the fruits of success. The roots need to be established in order for the fruits to grow. If your life is not guided by philosophy, it will be guided by fantasy. Always have a plan. Don't limit success to a single area. Success in one area will make you an achiever, but not a super achiever. If you have failed to consciously define a philosophy of success, you've unconsciously defined a philosophy of failure. Always use intention and always have a plan. Lack of self-knowledge is the main obstacle to finding the meaning of success and to finding success meaningful. Make sure you do the work to get to know yourself. There are four basic ways to measure success. One, having something. Two, experiencing a feeling. Three, setting and reaching goals. Four, following a mission or a purpose. Reaching goals is being goal-oriented, and following a mission is being process-oriented. I always thought of people as falling into one of these two categories, but maybe these are only two of multiple other philosophies. Having something, whether it's physical or intangible, and experiencing something are motivators that can be just as strong as following a process or striving to achieve a goal. There are two main causes of failure, lack of clear goals and difficulty with self-motivation. There are five primary steps to success. One, find out what you really want. The cloudier your image of success is, the harder a time you'll have of actually reaching it. Two, put goals in writing. Three, check how well you've performed and make sure to judge this as objectively as possible. And remember, if the plan fails, you didn't fail, you're not a failure, the plan failed. Or, enjoy reviewing the benefits of success. This builds joy and builds momentum. Number five, work smarter. Every job has three main obstacles, you, other people, and the job itself. Disarming someone is the first step to successfully making a sale. Make sure you maintain a firm but friendly attitude. Be kind, but lay ground rules and stand your ground. Make sure to keep your word. Focus on simplicity and especially use simple language. Try pretending to be less intelligent than you actually are. This is a powerful persuasion technique. It's always beneficial for you if the person you're trying to persuade of something thinks you're the opposite of what you actually are. If you're smart, let them think you're dumb. They'll underestimate you and this will give you the upper hand in negotiations. If you're unknowledgeable about a particular subject, make them think that you're smarter than you actually are. They'll have confidence in you and they'll feel outmatched. But be careful not to lie, it's easy to spot someone who's faking it. The greatest truths are the simplest, and so are the greatest people. There is no limit to what you can do when you truly do not care who gets the credit. The real sign of a champion is enthusiasm against all odds. Create an environment of competing with yourself and not with others. Handle each task only once, in order, to completion. Don't sift through your tasks to complete the easiest ones now and leave the more difficult ones for later. Pick one thing and tackle it no matter how difficult it is. Think about Parkinson's law. Tasks expand to fill the time allotted for them. You have to develop strong time management skills. Plan six things to do each day and plan them the night before. Give your very best and the best will come back to you. Energy spent worrying about success and failure will just diminish the amount of energy you can devote to the task at hand. To become an excellent salesperson, learn to sell yourself, not the product. Sell who you are, your confidence, and your beliefs. Have positive value, self-worth, and self-esteem. Nothing else you do will make a difference if these things are not in place. Get satisfaction from completion, not from the acceptance of others. If you fail to gain recognition from your efforts, it shouldn't matter. It should be all about completion and about yourself. Stop worrying about the outside world and start consulting your inner voice. The definition of success is living your life the way you want to without interfering with the rights of others to do the same. You can get everything you want in life if you help enough other people get enough of what they want. You are successful once you've dealt with the physical, mental, and spiritual self successfully. Motivation is like a fire. It will eventually die down and you need to poke at it to get it going again. Just like stoking a fire, stoking the mind creates motion. The environment you select and the people you choose to associate with are the best ways to stoke the fires of motivation. Positive thinking is an optimistic hope not necessarily based on any facts. Positive believing is the same optimistic hope, but this time based on a sound reason. Motivation is not a permanent state. Like bathing or eating, you need exposure to it every day consistently to gain its benefits. Two weeks after you've learned something, unless it's reinforced during that two week period, you retain only 4% of that knowledge. Also, your mind seeks out certain messages and learned material depending on the mood that you were in when you learned the material. So, expose yourself to the same material multiple times so that you strike upon different moods in yourself 
when you're learning it. This will strike upon slightly different messages within the material and ultimately reinforce the knowledge. Believe and conceive, then achieve. This concept also relates to negativity. If you only believe in negativity, that's all you'll ever get. Perfectionism degrades performance and success. Feeling like a failure when you don't perform at your best leads you to feeling like a failure as a human being. Self-confidence is self-love. It does not need to be earned through achievement. You give a child unconditional love, and even more so when they're upset, so do the same for yourself. You cannot be depressed and have good self-esteem. The two states are enemies of each other. When you're feeling depressed, write out your self-talk. This will stop the downward spiral of negativity and all of the internal chaos and help prove to yourself what nonsense you've been speaking to yourself. Negotiation. Dignity goes hand in hand with financial independence. Embrace negotiation-based relationships over adversarial relationships. Your goal should not be to kill your adversary, but to make everybody better. You want to resolve problems so they stay resolved. Don't create more conflict. Use a problem-oriented philosophy and not a game-oriented philosophy. When presented with someone else's problem, view it as a mutual problem to solve. Do not view the other person as an adversary to be controlled. Don't try to manipulate and defeat. Nonverbal communication is also key. Know when to write to someone, know when to speak to them face to face, or when calling them on the phone might suffice. It's easier to meet defensiveness with being supportive rather than being defensive yourself. Experienced negotiators want to negotiate with people who are stronger negotiators than they are. Good negotiators try to make more pie for everybody, not keep the biggest slice for themselves. There are seven main keys to creating positive sales negotiations. One, body language. Use gestures that are consistent with what you say and that precede what you say. 2. Be open-minded. 3. Use questions effectively. 4. Listen carefully and avoid contradictions and interruptions. Number 5. Clarity is key above all else. Avoid using cliches, technical terms, and other confusing language. Number 6. Neutrality. Avoid judgment, use neutral language, and try to be an explorer rather than a teacher. Number 7. Creativity. Avoid ultimatums and use creative solutions to create unique value. Financial planning. Successful people are motivated by the desire for pleasing results, and people who fail are motivated by the desire for pleasing experiences. You don't need a blueprint, you just need to know your next step. It's like someone walking down a dark alley with a lantern. They can't see the end of the road, but they can see their next step. If they take that next step, they can see the next. You'll never win by being a lender. You have to be an owner. It's better to own a piece of an industry, like stocks, or real estate than it is to own certificates of deposit or bonds. Money gives you options, not happiness. If you're an indecisive person, and indecision is one of the main obstacles you personally have to overcome to pursue something with enough dedication for it to yield wealth for you, then wealth in and of itself will not make you happy unless you have overcome that indecision. So the process of doing what it takes to become wealthy is what will make you happy, and the money will follow and be a result of that process. Stability versus safety. Stability is the repeatable return of a certain number of dollars. Safety is the repeatable return of a certain amount of food, clothing, shelter, or other necessary asset. Seek safety, not stability. Stability gets eaten by inflation. People fail to follow a plan for reaching financial independence because they think they have enough time, they fail to establish a goal, and they don't understand what money can do for them. Procrastination is the most sinister of these roadblocks. You need to make others comfortable if you're talking with them about money. It's about removing physical and mental barriers. It's about bringing others closer to you and fostering trust. For many disciplines like financial planning, office design is actually a huge component of success. Using round tables helps keep your clients involved and makes them feel like they're as much a part of the process as you are. Don't create a wall between yourself and the person you're speaking with. Physical fitness. The tougher you are on yourself, the easier life will be on you. You should aim to engage in aerobic exercise four times a week for 20 minutes each. Building muscle should be a secondary focus. Focus on the inside rather than the outside. This will make you fit for life. When someone dies, they die not so much of a particular disease or ailment, but of their entire life's habits. The things that really try your soul are not choices between good and evil, but choices between conflicting loyalty friends, family, country, etc. We all find occasions where we have to choose between what we believe is right and what we suspect is advantageous. 
A small amount of humor will be more convincing than even a large amount of evidence. Do not remain idle. Satisfaction comes from effort and a job well done. Try using analogies. They can be more persuasive than plain speech. They can also help you avoid incriminating yourself or others while still getting a clear point across. Integrity is defined as the quality that makes people faithful to the truth. A good leader wields and exercises power that helps improve the lives of other people or helps improve systems that help improve the lives of other people. Communicating and persuading go hand in hand. You can't persuade someone if you fail to listen to them. And you can't become a super achiever if you can't communicate. Communication should be about 49% talking and 51% listening. We all know the importance of listening. This has been into us from an early age, and we all recognize that communication involves both speaking and listening. But if someone tells you, you need to improve your communication skills, what do you immediately assume? You probably immediately jump to thoughts about improving how you're speaking, your body language, and the words you're using. Would you actually be more likely to jump immediately to thinking about how to listen better? Probably not. This scenario shows us that we have an inherent bias for speaking rather than listening. Flip the script. Opportunities for success become more numerous as time goes on. In his book, The Third Wave, Alvin Toffler talks about a move from big industry to more solitude and self-sufficiency in resources. We've seen this develop firsthand in the last several years with the rise of social media and entrepreneurship. Maybe this is one reason why perseverance is so important. Sure, we gather knowledge over time which makes us more likely to succeed, and we also increase statistical chances of success through persevering since we're trying for a longer period of time. But maybe it's more than that. Maybe as we grow older, we also see increasingly more opportunities for success as the world changes, and comparing the number of resources we have available to us now to those we used to have available to us makes us believe that achieving success is more likely. The more you give, the more you get. Luck comes when opportunity meets preparation. If you are successful in your journey to success, that in and of itself becomes success. The effort itself becomes the reward. This is how dopamine works if you maintain a healthy relationship with your work over time. Ideological meets biological. Pain is a signal for change. Change either what you're doing or how you're doing it. 80% of pain is self-inflicted. And we're not just talking about physical pain. Mostly we're talking about emotional and mental pain. Mental focus initiated by pain can become motivation for success. Pain becomes a signal that success is close. Respond to pain first by seeking solutions to the problems that are causing it rather than seeking to kill the pain unexamined. Winning is a continual process of improvement. The three most common characteristics of winners are having high self-esteem, exercising choice in your own destiny, and having creative imagination to help turn dreams into goals. The country that wins the war writes the history books. Winners are interviewed more often than losers. Do you think winners always give an objective picture of winning? Is high performance an objective or a speculative science? Disappointments, one after another after another, eventually lead to a choice. Do you seek comfort or do you seek solutions? Trying to top other people when they speak about what they've done and obsessing over material rewards are signs that you do not have control over success. Positive thinking. A problem is nothing but concentrated opportunity. Positive thinking maintains energy and gives your words a therapeutic effect. This is great for sales and also just for expressing general goodwill when interacting with others. You can't avoid having negative thoughts, but you can choose to ignore them. Are there only two choices between negative and positive, or can you just be realistic? The fact is, most people who think they're realistic are actually pessimistic. So, think positively. There is only one mental pattern that is stronger than fear, and that is faith. So cultivate faith and that will be your substitution for self-doubt. Do you believe that each problem contains the seed to its own solution? The trouble with good ideas is that they quickly degenerate into hard work. All super achievers invest their energy in areas that they know they can influence and avoid investing energy in areas that they know they have no control over. Moment to moment choices are what define success. Attitude says more about how you can perform than words can. Success in relationships is the most difficult success to attain. If you search for it and grasp at it, you will lose it. Like a butterfly or a baby learning to walk, the beauty lies in the moments you take in that you can't preserve. If you hold on too tightly to a moment for fear of loss, you will lose it. You cannot extend moments of joy through sheer will. 
You just have to take the moments in and let them happen in a climate of acceptance.